Hi, all right, welcome everybody. Welcome to XPUG 2016. Some of you have been through our tutorial day yesterday, but this is the official kickoff, so I get to do a few of the, the housekeeping items. So first, safety at Argon. We're always trying to keep safe. So uh, if you see anything that is a safety hazard or if you feel that there is something that you need to deal with, um, please talk to the organizers. We try not to do anything in too busy a way that we do it unsafely. And if there is an emergency, um, if you call from an Argonne phone, 911 is answered by the Argonne Fire Department, which has a, a fire rescue ambulance, um, like a, a, a normal 911 system. If you're not using an Argonne phone, that's the, it's better to call that number rather than 911, because 911 from your cell phone will go to a, a local police department, whereas this will continue and, and be routed through. Oh, my slides are advancing here. Um, all right, so then if you do have to evacuate, uh, this is the conference center, so clearly there are doors over there, and if you're in the small rooms, there are doors at the back that are emergency exits. Um, if you do have to evacuate, uh, if you follow those arrows, that's right back through the visitor parking lot, and our assembly area for fire is right outside the visitor information center. So just follow the crowd that direction. Um, there are also tornado shelters here. Uh, the storage and um, catering room that is right through that wall uh, is a tornado shelter as well as the men's and women's bathrooms. And a uh, little more important things, if they're not being used as a tornado shelter, the men's and women's bathrooms are to the left out of the door here, uh, down right before the Argonne security thing. There's a smoking area outside, so we ask that you not smoke right by the door to go around the corner a little bit. So moving on to XPUG, uh, we, we have a, a pretty dynamic group. We've got 141 people registered, not everybody for every day, but uh, 141 total, 36 different institutions. Uh, India is our record for uh, distance traveled, though we have several international representatives. Um, we have eight tutorials, um, five of those ran yesterday. Uh, there'll be three more tomorrow that'll be running in parallel. Four keynotes, 27 presentations, and something that we always try to do at XPEG meetings are lightning talks. So those are things where people maybe don't have all of the results to present, but they want to talk about the current state of their work. And so th those will be scattered throughout the day. Um, I want to always point you to the XPEG website. Um, you should be able to find uh, an updated schedule there, so if we have to change the schedule any, the, the updated schedule will always be there. Though we, we do have printouts as well if you prefer the paper version. <coughs> there is a slide repository there, so if you go to that website, um, it is fed from EasyChair, so the speakers upload to the EasyChair conference management system, and um, I push a button every once in a while, and it uh, copies all of those slides uh, in PDF format to that. So if, if you're looking for somebody's slides, they should be there if they've given them to us. Um, there are also links to webcasts and the recordings, and so um, some of these are being recorded. You can see the camera back here, and uh, those are going out right now over the internet through live stream from this room and blue jeans from the, the parallel rooms the rest of the days. Um, so you, c you can tell your colleagues that they can watch you through that. Um, there will be some recordings as soon as we get those processed and put up after the conference. And you can always look uh, on the website for meeting logistics as well. So there's a, a whole logistics sheet about things like wireless and parking and things that you've probably already figured out by now. Uh, tonight there is the conference dinner, so you're all welcome to join us at, at Chuck's Southern Comforts Cafe. Uh, there'll be drinks about 5.30 and dinner about 6.30. Uh, Intel is sponsoring it, so we thank them for, for defraying the cost for us. Uh, basically, all you do to get there is go back out Northgate Road and turn left on Cass Avenue. You'll pass over the tollway, and it, it'll be on your right in a little less than a mile once you go over the tollway. Um, we are not running conference buses, so if you don't have a car or you need some sort of ride, please let Joan know back at, at the registration table, and if you're able to give somebody a ride, um, I think you know there's there's only a few people who need rides, but they would probably appreciate it, and they can take the the shuttle bus back to their hotel. Um, there are also a few people I think who need like a ride to Hyde Park or something, and so if if you're able to do that, please let Joan know as well. 
Um, finally, I want to thank the, the organizing committee for all of the work that's gone into it. Um, so um, the, the people on here from Cray are Ben Hahn and Lisa Smith, and so they were very involved in helping us get all of this um, planned and, and put in place. And then Joan Stover and Renee Plasek uh, were, were instrumental in getting everything put together here. And then Judy Bignino and Jackie Lebrecht from our conference services uh, helped us figure out all the food and, and understand how to put a, a large conference together this way. So thanks, everybody. And I will pass it on off to, to Richard for our, our welcome from the chair. Thanks, David. I'm Richard Gerber from Dorsky. I'm also president of ICSPUG, and if I can get this working here. So welcome to ICSPUG. Um, I just want to say a few words before we get started. Um, Welcome back to all the people who have been part of Xpug for the last couple of years, and and welcome to the people who are new faces. It's good to see you. I just want to mention uh, for those of you who don't know a, a few words about what Xpug is, and really we're we're really all about uh, performance, performance on the Xeon Phi. So the, the night's landing is the, is a process we're re really looking at right this moment. But we really are very want to be very open, and we really have a free exchange, and e everybody's welcome to join us. And I put the, the picture of the world up there because we really have become an international organization. It's really been it's really been fun. Um, we are independent. We're not part of Intel, but that said, we um, are very involved with Intel. Intel very strongly supports us, and we work with them a lot. And, and none of this would be possible without Intel. So th so thank you um, to Intel for that. So looking back over, I've been involved with this about two years, and it's really been um, just a little bit over two years if you if you count back to um, when the the seeds were when the seeds were were kind of sown for the, the first real Xpug meeting at TAC at, at Texas. It's just been maybe two and a half years, and and, and in that time, um, things have just exploded. So I put some things up here on the map. We've had two. Uh, box at supercomputing, and we're having another one this year. I'll say a, a little bit about that in a minute. And um, all of those have been really been overflowing. And then at Berkeley last year, we had a meeting similar to this. So we had turned people away, and of course, you had 140 whatever here today. Um, and then last two years at ISC, we've had a workshop and a BOF. And in fact, at this year at ISC, we our workshop was over twice as big as any other workshop at ISC altogether. They had to find us a different room and move us to a room about this size, maybe bigger than this, um, to hold about 100 people. Uh, so that was pr that's pretty amazing. And then um, kind of even more amazing to me is, it, is the way that Xpug has kind of organic organically grown. So we also had two very big meetings, similar uh, to the scale of this one, um, last year in St. Petersburg, Russia, and in Ostrava, um, Czech Republic. And those people just came together, saw what we were doing, and just wanted to, to do it again there. So I think we're also going to be putting together some mechanism for, for groups around the world to, to kind of pick up the brand and pick up the way we do things and, and have Xpug meetings um, all over the place. So it's really been, it's really been an explosive um, growth and, and, and very successful. And um, a lot of people have made it happen. The, the names you see up there are, are the steering committee for, for Xpug. And uh, so it's a lot of dedicated people doing a lot of hard work. I want to also thank the program committee for today's meeting. And I, I hope I got everybody's name up here. It started to get a little bit hard because there's so many people that were helping out, which is great. It was great. So I hope um, we can thank everybody on here. Um, but in particular, do thank, uh, do thank David. So if you get a chance to, to thank David, I mean, really do, because he put this all together and, and made it all work. So thanks, David. So I wanted to say just a little bit about what I've seen at Xpug over the last two years. Um, and you'll see this all the time. So you'll see lots of presentations today, and, the, and there'll be something like this. We, we talk about performance. We're all about performance. So you'll see a plot. This is, this is your code that you took on, say, Haswell, and you ran it, and this is what you're getting today. Then you see you do a lot of work <laughs> and get a lot of good stuff done. And then you have something, an optimized version that's running on the Phi. So it's fantastic. But then it always turns out that you take it 
and you put it back on the original Haswell, and it goes something like this. Right. So this, this was a little bit of a surprise, but I guess it really shouldn't have been because I think that people doing GPU optimizations and others also saw this. So it really, it really helps the code. So now you have um, three numbers, and then what people often do is then they take their unoptimized code and run it on the, on the phi, and it often doesn't run as well. So now you have four numbers. And so people compare these numbers, and sometimes it gets a little bit confusing. So one thing I do ask is that, that you, you state exactly what you're comparing to what when you, when you say you're getting um, 2x or 5x or whatever performance increases. But what I really like to look at are these two numbers. So take your code on um, the original Haswell, your original on the Haswell, which is basically business as usual, and then compare that to what you're getting on the, your optimized code on, on the phi, right? So this really gives you the difference of, oh, oh, uh, this really shows the impact of the phi because if we had just gone to, you kept your code on Haswell or Broadwell or whatever, you just would have plopped it there and you would have gotten this performance over on the left. And so all your work and the, the combination of all your work and the, the, the new architecture has really led to this, this bigger improvement. So this is the number I'd like to, I like to quote um, whenever possible. That said, this, I also want to show this number in green. So this, this, num this performance in green represents what I've given at NERSC, the, the performance team as a target. So I'd like to see, I'd like to see codes running, I told them, 20% faster on um, the Xeon Phi than on an equivalent Haswell system. I should say, when I say Haswell, I'm talking about node for node. So it's a dual socket Haswell versus a, a single socket Phi. These are the performance we're looking at. So I, I, in some sense, that 20% that increase may not seem that spectacular. And, and, and if you quote that number, optimized Haswell against optimized Xeon Phi, and say 1.2 or 1.3, you know, people will go, oh, that's pretty good. But, uh, but if you go back and look at your original code on the original Haswell, which is, would have been what you did um, had we not made the transition, you're talking about a factor of about two and a half, right? So this modest 20% increase here is really is really an improvement of, of two and a half times what you would have gotten um, on an equivalent system with approximately the same power and cost, et cetera, things like that. So these are the numbers I like to talk about. And then, of course, today we're, I'm sure we're going to hear about um, all you guys because you guys are the rock stars of Vixpug, so you're going to be off the charts, I'm sure, later on. So I'm looking forward to hearing that. So um, anyway, so I hope you enjoy the rest of uh, the week. And I just wanted to mention that we do have a uh, – a birds of a feather coming up at SC, and we'll be announcing more about that in a little bit. And then we're also doing something that is even uh, less well-defined at this point, but we'll be doing something at the Intel HPC Developers Conference um, right before uh, supercomputing in Salt Lake City. And finally, one other thing I wanted to mention is that we have these working groups that are active, and they meet um, one or two times a month on, on teleconferences. So. Um, the most active ones right now are the general optimization and tuning, uh, the vectorization, and the MPI, and these, these are the people that are running them. And I think, David, we have, you can find out more on Thursday about these groups. So after lunch on Thursday, um, if you're interested, um, check in with the, these groups. And then thanks again to a lot of people, but particularly Argon for, for hosting this in, the, in this great facility. Um, David, again, for doing everything. Intel, um, Lisa Smith, who isn't here, I guess. But I know I've worked very closely with David to, 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 to make this all happen. Um, everybody on the steering and program committees, Joe Curley, who will be speaking up here in a little bit, has been a strong, strong supporter of Xbug for a long time. And Melissa, where's Melissa? Raise your hand, Melissa. So I think um, David, you, me, and Melissa are the only ones from the steering committee that are here. I hope I didn't forget anybody, but, right? So, so thank Melissa. Melissa is, is really the one who does a lot of things, but She's the one that makes the website work. So it's really a great website. So, so thank you, Melissa.